Oh dear, it's happening again, boys. People supporting the Black Lives Matter movement are just taking the law and doing whatever they like in the most narcissistic way you can imagine. I'm sure by the title of the video you know exactly what we're going to talk about, so we may as well get straight into what Channel 4 had to report on it. Unofficial here, of course, just meaning illegal. But we can't say that Black Lives Matter are doing anything illegal now, can we? Yes, I believe that the iconic scene, I said that it looks like the barbarians have taken over Rome. Something very close to that anyway. You do not tear down statues and then celebrate unless you are trying to tear down what came before you for some sort of revolution. This should be a worrying sign, but Channel 4 are making out like this revolutionary act is just the norm. And that's probably because it is the norm. Ah yes, here she is, the narcissistic bitch herself. This is a huge problem that they don't understand with statues. We don't tend to put up statues of the living, we tend to put up statues after heroes have died. And the reason for this is, is that we want to immortalise what they represent. And in Colston's case, we wanted to eternally remember him for the charity and philanthropy he partook in. Not because he was a slave trader. I grew up in the southwest. I'm one of five kids and I was the only black girl in my class. Racism was just something we all had to deal with. Yes, believe it or not, when you are in a majority white country and you're the minority, you are probably going to be one of the few people in the class who is a minority. This shouldn't be breaking news to anyone. And another thing is all the time they say, oh, racism is just something we have to deal with. Oh, my personal experience and all that. I rarely ever hear concrete examples. The most concrete example I have off the top of my head is from Pretty Patel, who said that she was called racial names, which I'm sure happened to this girl as well. But I know this is going to be crazy for all of you. Kids do stupid things to each other. And if being called names at school, even if they are racial slurs, if they're worrying you when you're quite clearly in your 30s, then maybe you actually need to see therapy because I think these problems don't come from being called names at school. It never felt like anything would ever change. On the 7th of June, my husband Alan and I decided to go to the Black Lives Matter march. Black Lives Matter! I had no idea this was going to become such a life-changing moment. I think as soon as riots started going off in America, that was when I knew that something big was going to come over to the UK. Because we seem to just copycat, or the left seem to just copycat exactly what the American left do. And the American left seem to be all for whatever the hell Black Lives Matter and Antifa seem to want to do there. Because, you know, the Chaz, even though it's gone now, or the Chop, whatever you want to call it, that was there for weeks. I mean, as soon as an autonomous zone appears up in one of your major cities, you should probably get the army in to dismantle it. But no, it was there for weeks. And when they start toppling statues, I knew that they were going to topple statues here, and I knew it was going to change things in Britain, and probably even keep those changes for years. Because they've already said they're not going to put Colston back. And I knew, given all the narcissistic pricks you see on CNN talking about their lived experience and thinking that racism revolves all around them and what they want. You could tell that this was going to happen in the UK, and lo and behold, Channel 4 News decided to just indulge in this woman's narcissism. Al just got swept along with it all and started dragging the statue. I was cheering. Why do you hate your own country, Al? Why do you hate your roots? Why do you want a complete cultural revolution here? Why do you hate the fact that there is a statue there for the good a man did, rather than thinking about the bad he did all the time. This is what we call the madness of crowds. You just go along with whatever they do, and I don't think you particularly think about it. No one there pulling down that statue had engaged their brain at any point. And once they did it, they used all the post hoc arguments to explain why it was actually a good thing that they destroyed a piece of Bristol's legacy. It felt so exciting. <laughs> The next thing I know, a friend said, get on the plinth. I'm not an activist, I got on that plinth. You're not an activist, but you are there to be an activist, to take down the statue while your husband helped roll the statue along to the river, 
A friend says get on the plinth and you, not being an activist in any way, be an activist and get straight up on that plinth and put the black power sign in the air. Jesus Christ. Post hoc rationale, people. That's exactly what this is. I'm not really an activist, despite the fact that she is literally doing activism. I'm afraid I'm scared of heights, which I completely forgot about. Oh, you are not scared of a height of 10 to 15 feet, you liar. This is all just fluffing up for Channel 4 News. It's like, oh, look, she overcame her fear because she hates racism so much. Get out of here. The crowds were cheering all around me, but I just got lost in the moment. It felt really empowering. I raised my hands for George Floyd. I raised my hands for the people who've died at the hands of the police for being black. Yes, that's absolutely happened in the past, but again, as I say over and over and over again, we don't have enough evidence to show that George Floyd died because he was black. And the evidence used to prove, quote unquote, that police officers are racist in America is built on very, very shoddy statistics. And the use of incredibly poor and unproven unconscious bias testing which were used on the police after the Stephen Lawrence inquiry to try and prove that they're a racist. And lo and behold, because they were looking for racism, they happened to find it. Despite the fact that the tests are completely unproven, but hey, leftists don't really care about the scientific method. Oh wait, I'm spoiling for a bit ahead. To show people who think that we don't matter, that we do matter, and if that makes somebody feel uncomfortable, they need to ask themselves why they feel uncomfortable. Who says black lives don't matter? Who says it? Who, who actually says it unironically? I don't think there has ever been a time ever where I've seen someone unironically say black lives don't matter. The problem isn't that we think your lives don't matter. The problem is you think your narcissistic tendencies should be the basis for policy and culture within the UK. And we completely disagree with that. And if you think that means that we think black lives don't matter, then maybe you need to reassess what you think of the real world, for God's sake. That night, Al posted the picture of me on the plinth, and overnight, it went viral. Yeah, no shit. Anything remotely looking like this to do with Black Lives Matter always goes viral without failure. You're acting as if this is a surprise. You're acting as if Black Lives Matter doesn't have overwhelming support from social media. Of course it bloody does. They don't seem to realise that they get their own way pretty much all the time. That's why Edward Colston still isn't back on that plinth and a statue of you was put up. It seemed to me that this was this image of her with her fist in the air was an iconic image. It was an image that encapsulated everything about what was happening. To make this sculpture is not an act without responsibility. You think it's a responsibility? to unofficially and illegally put up a statue of some random black woman. I mean, literally, she is literally just some run random black woman. And, you know, you feel a responsibility for this? I mean, don't get me wrong, I know that Mark Quinn is a bit of a freak. I mean, he's made self-portraits, uh, or self-busts, I should say, of himself, made from his own blood that he collects over five months. So, like quite a lot of artists, he is by no means in his right mind. But my god, can you please explain to me what responsibility is there when you illegally and unofficially put up a statue of a random black woman. Because you're just saying things to sound like it's important in some way. All those questions were going through your mind. Is this a good thing to do? Is it a bad thing to do? So basically what happens is by capturing all these pictures of you, you can then feed them into a computer and it turns it into a 3D model. Right, okay. Uh, professional artists in the 21st century, ladies and gentlemen, they literally get computer programs to make statues out of resin for them. Yes, this is how much effort they wanted to put into it. They just take photos of her, put it through a program, and get a 3D printer to make the statue. Incredible work. It's like you can't work without blood or resin. Jesus Christ, let's be fair here, people. That doesn't look very good, really, does it? Yeah, well, that's just good, doesn't it? No, Mark, no, it doesn't. What's happening now, right across the world, feels like something I've never experienced before. It really feels like this is a moment, like stuff is actually going to change. It's making a stand for my mother, for black women like me, for my daughter, and something to feel proud of, for them to have a sense of belonging. This is a thing I don't get about these bloody skin intellectuals. What the fuck more do we have to do than grant you citizenship to make you feel like you belong? 
you are in Great Britain. Yes, we had a history of slave trade. Do you know who else had a history of slave trade? Every fucking country in the world. And this is despite the fact that we made it impossible for other empires and countries to partake in the transatlantic slave trade. The biggest slave trade in the world, which, by the way, Portugal partook more in than England. Or, sorry, Britain, I should say. And yet you're here, a country that took your parents in, a country that has basically given you the life you have now, and the best thing you can do to give back to it is to tear down the statues of the people they have mythologised because of the good they did for Britain and for the city you live in, and replace it narcissistically with an image of your own liking. Because again, you are nothing but a massive narcissist who seems to have achieved absolutely nothing meaningful in her life, so she has to get the whole world's attention on her. You're acting like a five-year-old girl. I hope you realise that. You are literally acting like a five-year-old girl who hates her parents. All I can say is grow the fuck up. Because we actually do belong here and we're not going anywhere. I don't feel I belong here, but really I do belong here. I'm not going anywhere. And in the meantime, I'm going to completely tear down your statues and replace them with likeness of my own. I say no. No, you don't get to do that. You don't get to decide that to belong here, you have to have a complete cultural revolution and tear down our history. I'm afraid you cannot just do that. I'm afraid to belong in Britain, you have to act British. And the British do not tear down their own statues. They do not narcissistically put statues up of themselves after they do tear down statues, should they ever do it. And they don't narcissistically say, I do belong here, despite saying before, I do not feel I belong here. British people feel they belong in Britain. You do not. I don't understand why you don't leave. Oh, anyway, talking of British people, the mayor of Bristol, Martin Reeves, who I believe is also a descendant of immigrants and was also in support of the protesters taking the statue down, though not in the way they did it, had this to say on this issue. So from The Guardian, Martin Reeves, the city's mayor, issued a statement saying that the future of the plinth and what is installed on it must be decided by the people of Bristol. He said the sculpture was the work and decision of a London-based artist and added it was not requested and permission was not given for it to be installed. But he stopped short of saying that the council would act to remove it. I don't have a massive problem with that last bit, but wait till the end and you'll see why. But this is a good thing. I mean, you can have the opinion that a statue of a slave trader can be taken down as long as it is done in a civil and democratic manner. And I don't actually have too much of an issue with that. I'm very much on the side that it should be kept up. But if the people of Bristol feel that it is more appropriate to replace it with a better hero for Bristol, I'd have no issue with that. Problem is, is that no one ever comes up with an alternative. They all just shout, take it down. And then, as he said, London-based artists decide that it should be a random black woman to go up there instead. And, well, unfortunately, the article also goes into a narcissism. So, shortly after the vehicles drove away, Reed stood in front of the statue with her fist in the air. It's just incredible, she said. That's pretty fucking ballsy, that it is. After meticulous planning to ensure the statue could be erected quickly enough to have it in place before officials arrived, the vehicles left the scene about 15 minutes after they got there. I just knew it was going to happen, said Reed. They were so efficient. The most powerful moment of the morning, she said, was watching children stand next to it and raising their fists, black children and white children together. Yes, I, I suppose it would be nice for someone who fully supports Black Lives Matter, seeing a load of kids indoctrinated into thinking that it's a good thing to follow a movement created by Marxists and cop killers who want to completely tear down everything the West stands for. Yes, unfortunately the spectre of Marx still haunts us, even if it is a completely bastardised version of his ideas. Back to the article. Reed, a stylist, attended the march with her husband, who one of the group that rolled the statue of Colston to the river after it was pulled down. She said that to stand for the BLM movement was massive, but it would be just as big if it was someone else representing the same thing. Yes, because it is rather small. Quinn, whose best-known works include his bloodhead self-portrait self and a sculpture of an artist that temporarily occupied the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square, Alison Lapper Pregnant, said he viewed it as a duty for prominent white artists to amplify other voices. God, he is a colossal twat. Jen created the sculpture when she stood on the plinth and raised her arm in the air, said Quinn. 
Now we're crystallising it. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I mean, really, I can't stand artists like this. I mean, this is the thing. Artists are usually quite humble in their works, or at least the ones I like. You know, you didn't see Leonardo da Vinci going around saying, my art is great, my art is the best. He was actually quite humble, saying that, well, an artist never actually really finishes his pieces, mine included. He, he thought they could do better, and then we end up making these pieces heroic, whereas Mark Quinn seems to think that 3D printing a woman and making a bust of himself with his own blood is somehow the greatest thing known to man. Narcissism's a disease, kids. I'd get rid of it soon. Anyway, let's finish this article off. On whether it, there was an issue with a white artist being behind the work, Reed said it's not even a question. If we have allies, it doesn't matter what colour they are. He had done something to represent BLM and keep the conversation going. And this is a thing that I've always thought. BLM isn't about black lives or black people or even about George Floyd or police brutality. Doesn't matter about any of that. All that matters is that they get their ends. And their ends are endless, really. I mean, a lot of BLM people basically just want full Marxism. And even when they have full Marxism and communism, they're going to keep going because they'll find capitalists somewhere within that Marxist system. A placard was br briefly placed on the plinth reading, Mark Quinn loves money, not blacks, before it was removed by another member of the public to applause. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. I mean, seriously, that has been my thought for ages, that... There will always be civil war within there, and oh man, you know, oh Mark does love money, see he's a capitalist, oh we can't have that. They only care about Marxism. It's not about George Floyd, it's not about police brutality. They want their own police force to be brutal against their enemies. And because they can only see the world in this way, that's how they think the current police force works, despite all the evidence to the contrary. But anyway... Others were broadly positive in their response. It's a really great addition to the centre of Bristol, said Bobby Loyal, an engineer. I just hope no one tries to rip this down. The statue before was offensive to a lot of people. I don't think this is. I think the council should leave it in place. Oh my lord. <laughs> Can you not see the narcissism on display here? The last statue was offensive to a lot of people, including me. I don't think this statue is offensive to me. Therefore, the, sta the council should keep the statue that I don't find offensive. Pure narcissism. Suzanne Bert Ilson, who was cycling past, did a double take as she saw the figure and stopped to look. I don't know. I didn't know they were replacing it, she said. It's absolutely beautiful. Told that it had been put up without permission, she said. I'd better get a picture before they take it down. And the author, Bernadine Everisto tweeted that some people will find this image of black empowerment offensive, outrageous, threatening, but that she thought it was wonderful. I, yes, of course they did. And I do find it funny that The Guardian, they don't they don't look for people saying that this is bad. They, they only have positive things to say, despite the fact that I'm sure many people went past thinking, God, aren't those a bunch of narcissists? Why are they putting up a statue of a random black woman? But no, they only put up opinions of people who, oh, they just happen to be there. Oh, they love the fact that black empowerment's offensive to people. Like, I don't believe it. I don't believe that the only people who walked past were people in support of it. I mean, I know it's Bristol and a leftist shithole, but there's still a lot of people there who vote conservative and even UKIP, and those people will definitely not be in favour of this statue replacing one of Bristol's, well, let's be honest, reasons for even existing. Anyway, unfortunately, Channel 4 News had a longer segment on the statue. In fact, they got exclusive access to it, apparently. So, although some of it's repeated, I'll just skip over that, we may as well go through the rest of it. Because there's a lot to say about this statue, and I think it really does represent leftist worldview on the world, in that it is incredibly narcissistic and mixed with Marxist tendencies, both of which should be destroyed, as they both make society go to shit. Anyway, let's get into it. So the first four minutes or so are exactly the same as the first four minutes of the short segment, but it goes into Jen's family life, and I think it's pretty important to go through that. I am um, going to call my brother in Australia. Um, hey, hey! So I've got a text message from from some a, a guy called Mark Quinn. I very much know Mark Quinn. Well, he's gonna he wants to make a statue of me to put on the plinth. Hang on, just think about this for a minute. Isn't this Channel 4 technically letting an illegal action go on without contacting the police? Doesn't that make them an accessory to the crime? They are literally filming a secret plan to do an unofficial and illegal erection of 
a statue that doesn't deserve to be there and is illegally placed there. Unless there's exemption because they're a journalist, I don't know. But it just seems very slimy that they're basically just doing this for views instead of doing what is legal and right. But, well, it's the media these days. What do we expect? Where the Colston oh statue is. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty full on. He's going to speak to Marvin Reese, who is the um, mayor of Bristol. Okay. He said that if they say no, he's going to put it up anyway. It's got to be a thousand times better than what was up there before. <laughs> yep, they just hate Britain. Oh, oh, a statue of my sister. Oh, it's got to be way better than someone who literally made Bristol the city it is. I mean, honestly, these people are brought up to hate Britain, and I don't think it's by the parents. Because we get to meet them a little later, and they basically just repeat what Martin Luther King says in his civil rights speeches. I, they're not bad people, and they certainly, I don't think, put this stuff in these kids' heads. It's obviously the education system and the unis that do that, and the media, of course. And honestly, I don't, I don't know why we tolerate it so much. There we go, these are big problems to solve. I'm gonna be a statue! <laughs> Narcissistic prick. Telling my brother was one thing, but I felt really nervous about telling my parents. I can't say that they've ever encouraged me to protest. Do you see what I mean? The parents aren't behind this, clearly. If it's not the parents encouraging her to protest, who is it? Well, it's as I said before. Universities, education, the media. And this is why I think we need the curriculum to not be nationalised and make schooling pretty much entirely private. You'll actually get an educated population when that finally happens. But leftists are all in charge, so what the hell can we do? My parents came here during the Windrush from Jamaica. They still do not feel like England is their home. Oh, really? That's interesting. Um, can you tell me two things, then? One, what exactly doesn't make them feel like it's their home? And two, why don't they go back to Jamaica, then? Maybe because they don't always feel welcome. Oh, maybe because they don't feel welcome. You don't actually know them. I don't actually think you know that they don't feel like England is their home. The only thing that makes me really doubt it is that you weren't encouraged to be an activist or I think to be anti-British by your parents. And I think you are making vast assumptions about their opinions on Britain without actually engaging them on the subject. But I only think that because we don't actually get an opinion from her parents at all within this segment. That's your wife. That's she. We're going to a, 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 a dance. The stance of my mother and father would be to be quiet, to get your head down, and to strive to be better. Um, my white parents had the exact same stance, so it sounds like they're pretty British. I'm not being funny, but keep your head down and strive to be better is about the most quintessentially British summary I can think of. We're not like the Americans, where we're loud and proud. We're quite humble, we're quite self-deprecating, and we do usually strive to be better. So they sound like they're a perfect fit. So can I please get their opinion on why this doesn't feel like home? The good lads, the good lads, they, you're not to chop the hand, the hand that feed you. And this country feed me. I am 87, and I don't make enemy among people. I try and make friends. Man, what a great attitude to have from him. I mean, seriously, this is why I don't think her anti-British sentiment comes from her parents. He says, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Britain fed me. Britain gave me opportunity. Britain is my home, I'm sure he thinks. He made friends with the locals. He tried to integrate. He tried to comply with British values from the looks of it. And it looks like he did pretty well. And I'm sure you can make the argument that, oh, well, you know, his daughter hates Britain. Maybe it's just resentment there. I'm sorry, I know a lot of white Marxists who also hate Britain. It is absolutely not the fault of this parent that his daughter is a raving socialist and Marxist and is a Black Lives Matter activist, etc. I don't blame him for that. The guy seems great. The difference between first generation and second generation. I think for the first generation, it was about complying. However, the second generation see injustices. Oh, for Christ's sake, you do realise that not only do immigrants have to comply, but natives have to comply with the culture as well. This is the issue we're having at the moment. Second generation immigrants are not complying, and kids of the boomer generation are generally not complying. Lucky for the boomers, I am one of the Zoomers who happens to like complying, because I think Britain's a great country, as did this Jamaican immigrant. But then she says, oh, I think I'm noticing injustices. I'm sorry, 
But if you're noticing injustices that no one before realised, then either you literally have sight of God himself, or you are completely making up injustices based on a completely different lens to the norm. One that has never worked in this country before and has never worked in another country. Because guess what? Marxism always fails and fucks up countries. Um, there's a famous artist that's going to make a statue of me. Yeah. That's going to go where Colston, Edward Colston was. I look in power and do it. I look in power and do it. I'm proud of her. It's not your fault if you mean white. And it's not my fault if, it was, if I become black. Live in peace. And that's the thing that I believe in. Man, I really do like her dad's outlook on the world. He is literally just saying be colorblind. It doesn't matter if you're white, doesn't matter if you're black. Just live with each other. Live in peace. You know, if you can't do that, well, obviously we need solutions. And I think citizens of Britain who really care about its history, culture and heritage should take precedent over the radical revolutionaries and Marxists we see everywhere today. And I don't give a shit about their skin colour. I'm going to deport Ash Sarkar. You can be sure as shit that I'm going to deport Owen Jones with her. But also, I don't blame the guy for being proud of her. Every single father will be proud of their daughter, even if they do things they disagree with. And also, I don't think she's fully told them what Black Lives Matter is about, and I don't think he's fully educated on it. The guy just seems to want to be left alone. And so he thinks she's being like Martin Luther King, fighting against racism and all that. When really, I mean, everyone watching this at least getting 25 minutes into this video by now, pretty much everyone watching this to this point will agree that Black Lives Matter is in itself a racist organisation. So yeah, to conclude, I quite like her dad and his ideas and what he has to say. I have a daughter, Layla. Yeah. She lives in London. Layla's like, I don't think you should do this. This is going to bring you unwanted attention. You're not going to like it. You're not going to feel comfortable with it. My daughter's concern is my safety. Well, you've got a scary far writer right here making a video about how you're a narcissistic prick. Hopefully that's the worst thing that happens to you. you uh, I just feel like you're underestimating that the outcry it might cause. I would be silly to say that there's not going to be a backlash from this, of which I am fully aware. Yeah, yeah. And I think it would be just as controversial if there is a woman going up holding up the Black Power Fist sign. Can't knock her, she's clearly raised a sensible daughter. I mean, it's a position I've always held. White power signs, black power signs, Indian power signs, whatever. I think they're all completely illiberal, and I don't think they have a place in a liberal society. Because it implies that one group should have privileges over another, and I don't think that should be the case at all. And here we are in a world where the Equalities Act basically says that it's okay to discriminate against white people, and there are a load of other ways in which, you know, groups get privilege over others. But it never seems to be white people on top. As my position is... Equality under the law, very small government, people want to self-segregate or go into diverse communities, whichever way you want to go, that's fine with me. If some happen to do better than others, then the process wasn't racist at all. Everyone had a fair chance to get to the top, and these just happen to be the outcomes. But for some reason, that's a racist thing to say. But anyway, we'll see what they say about this statue. It just seems like an opportunity you can't ignore. Um, yeah. Because I just of, don't want that opportunity to cause you guys any hurt or yeah. suffering or, yeah. do you know what I mean? I'll be okay, darling. I will. I'm sure you will, Mark. You know me. I'm, I'm <laughs> rough and stuff in my Afro puff, so, yeah. I mean, of course you're going to be all right. You, you had Channel 4 on your side from the start. You had institutions, you had the media, you basically have... Bristol Council on your side and you must have known that from the start because they let your husband throw the statue into the river but of course you feel empowered to do what you bloody want you narcissistic prick worst thing that can happen for me is that we bring out a mob of far-right people it might be a hardship and hopefully one that won't have any lasting detrimental effect on my life and my wife's life Christ, have you seen how the police actually deal with the far right? They actually, well, quote unquote, the far right, sorry. Treat them how, basically, I think the police should treat everyone who gets too rowdy, like we saw in London the other week. Ones that were violent with the police, the police fought back with as they should. And the ones that were being peaceful outside the cenotaph, the police just left them be. That's exactly how the police should work. However, when it comes to Black Lives Matter... No, they, they can just throw shit at the horses and basically no arrests are made. As we've seen, it, there seems to be a lot more injuries when Black Lives Matter have a big demonstration. 
gets the police come down harder on the quote-unquote far right. So I think you'll be fine, mate. To make this sculpture is not an act without responsibility. People in the far right could react against it. All those questions were going through our mind. Is this a good thing to do? Is it a bad thing to do? That's apparently what he meant by responsibility. He's got the responsibility to face up to a quote-unquote far-right mob. Again, mate, you'll be all right. The police actually act against quote-unquote far-right rioters and violent people. The rest of it's just a narcissistic monologue from her that I really can't be bothered going through anymore. Because by now you should get the idea. But anyway, if you're feeling very black-pilled half an hour into this video, don't worry! There's some good news! Yes, as you just saw, the statue was lifted up by Crane and put into a recycling and skip hire service. Unfortunately, it's not going straight to a landfill as it should be. According to The Guardian, a Bristol City Council spokeswoman said, This morning we removed the sculpture. It will be held at our museum for the artist to collect or donate to our collections. But, a white pill, BBC Bristol reported that Quinn would be charged with the cost of the removal and that the council said it had received complaints of fly tipping. <laughs> Hopefully he also gets hit with those fly tipping charges, but given that the council's full of leftists, I highly doubt that is going to happen. So I believe what's going to happen instead is that it's going to go on for sale, and whatever profits are made from selling the statue are going to go to a charity of Jen's choice that will help with teaching black history in the education system. But that was it. That was the saga of the Black Lives Matter statue called A Surge of Power, Jen Reed 2020. I'm sure there'll be more news in the future about the statue being sold, but this was just a quick day's news that gave narcissists exactly what they wanted. Attention. But they got negative attention from me, so if you ask me, this video was worth it. But in the meantime, that's everything I had for you. So, as usual, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.